Hello, welcome to Alyssa Jean's Reviews. My name, of course, is Alyssa, and this is my video for the 10 best holodeck episodes in Star Trek. This is a companion video to the video that I released last week, the 10 worst holodeck episodes in Star Trek. And in that video, I talked about how it was so difficult to narrow down my worst list to just 10 because there are so many bad holodeck episodes out there. And while conversely, it was a challenge to come up with 10 good episodes in the holodeck category for my best list. I just generally think most of the holodeck episodes are garbage. Um, so I mainly chose this category so I could do the worst list, if I'm being perfectly honest with you. So I ended up coming up with 10, but I had to kind of stretch it for the last three, especially the, the number 10. But 10, 9, and 8, they're fine. I like them. They're not great episodes. They're not as high of a quality as the episodes on my best time travel list or my best uh, parallel universe list. Um they're fine, <laughs> but uh, I had to stretch it a little bit so I could have a nice even round number for 10. Um, however, the episodes uh, in my top five are actually phenomenal. Um, and three out of the top five are from one particular Star Trek show. The only show that has figured out how to consistently use the holodecks in order to have effective comedies and effective character growth. In fact, I don't know if any other show really consistently ever has good character episodes taking place in the holodeck, but this one show does. And you will find out which show that is when, we, when I get to my top five in this video. Some of you probably already know, uh, but the rest of you, you'll figure it out. It definitely is not Voyager. <laughs> Voyager uh, dominating the worst list was four out of the top six, um, but Voyager does have three entries on this list too. Voyager made so many goddamn holodeck episodes, like half their episodes, I swear, are holodeck episodes, uh, that just statistically speaking, the odds are that they would have some on my best list as well. And they do have three here as well, but it's all in the six through 10 range. None of them in the top five. The top five is dominated by a different show that you will see when I get to it. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive into it. Let's start with my number 10 on my best holodeck episode list. <laughs> At number 10 on my list, Bride of Chaotica from Star Trek Voyager. So I was hesitant to include this one because this one does a couple of the things that I was really complaining about in the intro of my worst holodeck episode video. So for one thing, it does that season five Voyager thing where everybody goes to Captain Proton. I kind of get annoyed <laughs> by all of the Voyager things, how they had each season where they all had to go to a certain holodeck program. Also, this has the whole character from the 24th century being inexplicably obsessed with something from the 20th century thing. And Tom Paris had a lot of different random obsessions from the 20th century all throughout the series. And in general, I kind of thought the whole Captain Proton thing was dumb. However, the reason why I decided that I can include this on this best list is because I do find it interesting that they had these aliens who are photonic beings. This is the type of thing that I wanted Star Trek to do more often, and particularly Voyager, since they are in a whole new part of the galaxy that we had not seen before. I wanted to see more aliens that are completely different from human beings instead of seeing all these bumpity head aliens who have dogs, which is what Voyager did. They're just like humans. They have dogs. Uh, they just have little bumps on their heads. I kind of got tired of that. So this was refreshing to have these photonic beings who are so different 
from humans and Vulcans and, and people from the Alpha Quadrant that they uh, don't understand our life form and they mistook the holodeck program for actual life forms which i found to be really interesting and it made for some humor as well and i gotta give a shout out to kate mulgrew for really hamming it up at the end of this episode although i will say she does not ham it up as well as avery brooks does in another episode that we'll get to later in this video but she does a pretty good job and i'm sure she was having fun so you know what sure why not let's put this in at number 10. Number nine, number nine, number nine. At number nine, elementary deer data from Star Trek, The Next Generation. So as with the previous entry, I was hesitant to put this one on my list because it does do one of those things that holodeck episodes are prone to do that drives me crazy, which is to have the holodeck safeties conveniently malfunction so that we can create a sense of danger and create tension in the episode as i talked about in the intro of my worst holodeck episode video i reject the very notion of holodeck safeties i think holodecks should just quite simply be designed so that you can never get hurt during your leisure time since that is what holodecks are primarily used for why would they make it possible for starfleet officers to get injured or killed during their leisure time they should just be designed so that you can't get hurt there shouldn't be these safeties that can conveniently malfunction when the plot requires it. However, putting that aside, I did decide to put this on this list because it is the introduction of Dr. Moriarty, who is the first interesting sentient holographic character in Star Trek. We did get Minuet as a sentient holographic character in season one, but as I said, Moriarty is the first interesting sentient sentient holiday character in Star Trek and of course he, he would go on to appear in Ship in a Bottle an episode that we'll see later in this video which I do think Ship in a Bottle is a lot better than this one however I was interested in this sentient character I was interested in this character I really like this character quite a lot so I will give this episode some credit for introducing him and just ignore the whole holodeck safeties malfunctioning thing since a lot of holodeck episodes do that anyways so I'll go ahead and insert this at number nine on my list eight is pretty great at number eight worst case scenario from star trek voyager so uh, this is uh, the episode where uh the crew accidentally unearths this uh training program that tuvok had made back in the season one time period to prepare his security team for the possibility of a maki takeover but uh the crew finds it i think it was tom paris and harry kim if i remember correctly and they mistake it for a hollow novel so I do like this episode, but I gotta get this out of the way first. There was one reason I was a little hesitant to include this one, and it does do that thing that annoys me that Voyager episodes often do, which is the entire crew gets obsessed with the same holodeck program, and it's just all the rage, and they're all talking about it, and Neelix is all like, oh, what did you do when Chakotay said this one thing? I was thinking that, I come on. Nobody would do that for a fucking training program, especially when it includes characters who are people that you know and love, like Chakotay and Belana Torres. So I thought it was a little bit odd. But putting that aside, I really do enjoy this episode overall. I actually like the depiction of Chakotay here because I feel like uh, it was very reasonable for Tuvok to think that Chakotay might behave that way because he should have behaved more like that, honestly. I thought that in the real Voyager timeline, he... Uh, he succumbed to Starfleet regulations way too easily. Like by episode two, he was like, okay, I'm a Starfleet officer, telling all the Maki people, okay, you have to be Starfleet officers now. I think he would behave more like he behaves in this uh, this program that Tuvok created. Uh, so I kind of like that. Also, great to see Seska back. You know, after my rewatch of Voyager, I do appreciate Seska. She's a really good villain. I didn't in the past, but I do. So... 
Though I do have to suspend a little disbelief that she would find this program and insert herself in it and all that stuff, it was still pretty good to see her again and it made for a really great episode. So yeah, I enjoy this one. It's number eight on my list. Seven. At number seven, Future Imperfect from Star Trek The Next Generation. So now we're getting into the episodes that I just seriously really like, just wholeheartedly. There will be no more buts. There will be no more going, oh, well, this episode does this thing that I really hate, but I still like it anyway. Uh, no more of that. This one I just straight up like and always have really liked this episode. I think it is an underrated Riker episode as it is a very strong character episode for Riker as he deals with the possibility of a future in which he has a son and he's captain of the Enterprise but doesn't remember the last 16 years. Uh, this of course turns out just to be a holodeck program which at first he believes is enacted by the Romulans, but it turns out uh, it was his quote-unquote son who is actually an alien being. And, you know, it loses a little bit after having seen it a million times, but it definitely was one uh, that uh, had me twisting and turning the first time that I saw it. Um, but more so, it's just a very strong Riker episode. So it is not as good of a mindfuck holodeck episode as Ship in the Bottle, which we will get to later in this video. I promise you I keep bringing it up, but it will come later. Um, but this is still a fun episode, and uh, it's one that makes number seven on my best holodeck episode list. Number six. At number six, Living Witness from Star Trek Voyager. This one might be a little bit of a stretch as far as calling it a holodeck episode because one of the characters does specifically say this is not a holodeck. I mean, but isn't it though? I mean, it, it is for all intents and purposes. It is for the purposes of my videos. Uh, it may not be an interactive holographic program. However, it is a holographic program that people can walk around in and exist in. And it is an important holographic program because it is a powerful way of recreating history. First, we see the historical recreation through the eyes of the Kyrian with the false Voyager. And then we see the more accurate history through the eyes of the doctor and i just think this is a more powerful way of recreating history than simply telling it to someone verbally or writing it down uh, so even though it's not an interactive holographic program it is a powerful one uh, and this is a very powerful episode overall i would dare say it is more relevant right now in the year 2022 than it was in the 90s when this episode came out because the point of this episode is that we need to embrace our dark history we need to teach our dark history so that we can learn and move on we cannot sweep our dark history under the rug as if it never happened this is a topic that is much more in the public discourse today than it was then that's why i think it's more relevant so it's really really interesting to rewatch this episode uh, so one more thing before I move on though I knew that the uh, historical reenaction of the Voyager crew was fake immediately not because they were acting evil but because Janeway calls Harry Kim lieutenant I mean how fake is that anyways I'm gonna go ahead and move on but living witness comes in at number six and yes I am counting it as a holodeck episode number at number five, Crisis Point to Paradoxes from Star Trek Lower Decks. And in case you were not able to guess already, Lower Decks is the show I was referring to in the intro of this video as the show that will have three out of the top five and is the only show, in my opinion, in Star Trek that consistently has effective holodeck episodes, particularly effective comedy episodes that take place in the holodeck, whereas other shows tend to use holodecks for cheesy and overused bad sitcom tropes. 
Lower Decks uses the holodecks in order to do brilliant parodies of other Star Trek episodes and films. And in this particular episode, this of course is the sequel to Crisis Point, which we'll get to a little bit later. This one focuses on sequel films. So it does great parodies of Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, Star Trek V, uh, and uh, Star Trek Generations are all in here. And uh, also, a beautiful performance by George Takei at the end, although that scene may or may not be actually taking place in the holodeck. Still really great to see him. And this is a sneaky good character story for Tendi, who doesn't even appear to be the main character of this episode. And the main character of this episode, of course, is Boimler, who also has a really strong character episode. You see, Lower Decks is so good at using holodecks for strong character episodes. No other show really did that, at least not consistently. So do not fear, you will be seeing Lower Decks two more times on this list. But here at number five is Crisis Point 2 Paradoxes. The Fantastic Number Four. At number four, our man Bashir from Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Now this is an episode by all rights I should really hate based on all of the things that I talked about in the intro of my worst holodeck episode video and some of the things I brought up at the beginning of this video. It has the character from the 24th century who inexplicably is obsessed with an aspect of 20th century culture. It has the holodeck safeties breaking and yet and yet, I absolutely love this episode. I adore it. And I think that has everything to do with the acting of Alexander Siddig and uh, Andrew Robinson and the amazing chemistry between Dr. Bashir and Garrick. Great comic chemistry. There is great comic back and forths that happen between the two characters and this episode is also a really great parody of a 1960s James Bond film. It's one of the few if not the only holodeck episode outside of Star Trek Lower Decks that actually does a great parody of something. Uh, one of my favorite lines in this episode is after uh, Bashir is able to free themselves from their captor who is uh, portrayed by John Cena Dax by by kissing her and getting the key from her so they can escape and Garrett quips kiss the girl steal the key they don't teach you that in the obsidian order <laughs> I just love it so much I just love this dynamic that uh, Bashir is play acting at a 1960s earth um, depiction of what spies are like and Garrick actually was a spy so that was so great and this is the episode in which Avery Brooks hams it up to the ninth degree. I freaking loved it. I think that Avery Brooks was born to play a Bond villain. He is so perfect at it because he's really good at overacting. Let's be real here. <laughs> but he really hams it up and it was a lot of fun. I hear the word fun used for crappy episodes such as Take Me Out to the Hollow Suite. For me, this is genuine fun, and I loved it. Number five. Number three, sir. Number three. At number three, I excrete us from Star Trek Lower Decks. So uh, these were more like hollow booths that they went into, not so much a hollow deck per se, but it's the same thing. It has the same effect. So our main characters all go into these little booths to go through these training exercises and they are scored and graded on how they perform and all of the training exercises were parodies of previous Star Trek episodes and I was just rolling on the floor laughing non-stop for this whole episode we had a parody of TOS episode Spectre of the Gun Mirror Mirror and The Naked Time which gave a whole new definition to the phrase Naked Time Naked Time <laughs> and, and uh, they were going into some deep cuts like the Next Generation episode Ethics who even thinks to do a parody of ethics? It was so funny, though. 
And of course, we have Boimler doing the Borg training exercises and he continues to encounter the Borg Queen. And this episode did a fantastic job of poking fun of the Borg Queen, which of course I really appreciated because I hate the Borg Queen. <laughs> so this was such a fun, fun episode. It did have some uh, character stories uh, that worked well for Boimler and for Mariner, although maybe not as strong as the two Crisis Point episodes. More, this was all about the comedy and the brilliant parodies of previous Star Trek episodes, and it is one of my favorite Lower Decks episodes in the whole series, and number three on my favorite Holodeck episode list. Just the two of us. Number two. At number two, Crisis Point from Star Trek Lower Decks. Surprise, surprise. I feel like I've probably spoiled my number two and number one already, but that's okay. I mean, do you really have to be surprised, really? Anyway, so Crisis Point was the penultimate episode of the first season of Star Trek Lower Decks and in my opinion was the first truly great episode of the show and may in fact still be my number one favorite sh episode in the series. I kind of have to go back and watch all the Lower Decks episodes again at some point to make that final determination. Anyways, this is a fantastic holodeck episode. It does a brilliant parody of Star Trek films Everything from the opening credits where our characters are forced to dodge the opening credits that are coming flying at them like whoosh, 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 to the uh, shuttlecraft scene from Star Trek The Motion Picture where Kirk and Scotty are flying around the shuttlecraft staring at the Enterprise for 10 minutes and they <laughs> do it here in Lower Decks where all the characters are just like ooh, ah, looking at the Cerritos. Uh, so many great moments like that all throughout this episode that were brilliant, brilliant parodies of the films. But even more so than that, this episode was one of the strongest character-based episodes in all of Star Trek, in my opinion. I do feel that overall, Modern Trek is getting better and better at character-based episodes, and I include Strange New Worlds in that. I include even Prodigy and uh, Discovery and that. Maybe not so much on the Picard, but uh, this was a great <laughs> character episode for Mariner, who is struggling with her feelings about her mom and creates this villainous character called Vindicta, who then ends up having to fight the other Mariner, and she learns a lot of things about herself. This was kind of like tapestry-level character development, in my opinion. This was really good stuff, and it was paired with an amazing parody of Star Trek films. A truly great episode of Star Trek, and it is number two on the best holodeck episode list. And a number one, Ship in a Bottle from Star Trek The Next Generation. I know, shocker, right? Because it's not like I've been mentioning this all throughout this video. I can't help it. I love this episode so much. It is a masterpiece in holodeck episodes. It is the only holodeck episode and one of the few episodes in all of Star Trek, I would put maybe frame of mind in this category as well, that really messes with your sense of reality and has you guessing what is real and what is not real because you are there right along with the characters. And the first time that I watched this episode and Data gives you the revelation that so I figured out how he left the holodeck. He didn't actually leave the holodeck and neither did we. I was like, whoa, holy shit. Like, and uh, at the end of this episode, I've seen it a hundred times now, but at the end when Barkley is, you know, they're out of the holodeck, but Barkley says, computer, in program, just to make sure. 
and I've seen this a hundred times, but I still partially expect to see Barkley surrounded by the familiar grid of the holodeck. <laughs> and uh, Picard with his line about the little box that uh, Moriarty goes into where he's like, oh, perhaps we are in a box sitting on someone's desk. And I'm just like, stop it, Picard, just stop it. You're just fucking with my mind. <laughs> just stop it, stop it. It's too much, it's too much. It's so good I can't handle it. Um, now, as I mentioned when I talked about Elementary Deer Data, I really, really love this character of Moriarty. So much so that I am just terrified of how Picard Season 3 is going to ruin him the way that they ruined Q. I wish they would just leave him alone. Just let this be his last appearance. I'm really nervous about that. I may end up having to just pretend that Picard Season 3 never existed if it's as bad as Picard Season 2 and just remember the greatness of this episode. But hopefully they can do the character some justice. We'll see. Regardless of what happens in Star Trek, Picard, Ship in a Bottle remains the best holodeck episode in all of Star Trek and it is number one on my 10 best holodeck episode list. All right, thank you so much for joining me for my 10 best Star Trek holodeck episode video. Please check out the worst holodeck episode video that I released last week and stay tuned for later in November where I do my overrated and underrated list the next two weeks. Please subscribe if you have not already and I will see you really soon.